ESXi firewall, this is fairly simple. Um, it seems complicated at first, but it's really not. You manage the firewall via either the VI client or the CLI using ESX CLI network firewall commands. It depends on which one you're faster at. You can actually get by pretty quick using the CLI on this one. Basically, you can enable it, which is the default. So ESX CLI network firewall set dash enabled is what dash E is for. Dash enabled true. Or if you want to disable the firewall, ESX CLI network firewall set dash enabled false. You would think you would do set dash disabled, but you're setting the enabled key as either true or false. So remember that. There are two security levels. This is one of these odd things in the blueprint. I can't remember exactly how it's worded, but there actually used to be set of what default security levels within the uh, ESXi firewall. It used to be, I believe, high, medium, and low. Now there's really only high and low, and they still spell this out in the blueprint, and I think they just copy and pasted part of the blueprint from the older exam. So, But here's how it works. So if default action is set to block, then the level is high, which is the default. If the default action is to allow, then the level is low. If you set it to allow, you would then go in and block things you didn't want. By default, you have to open things you do want. So you can basically check this by doing ESX CLI network firewall get, and it gives you the default action. Uh, the medium setting used to be, I think it was, inbound was blocked and outbound was allowed by default. But we don't have that option anymore. Um, it's just the way it is. So to see the option, you do ESX CLI network firewall get changed using the ESX CLI network firewall set dash dash default dash action and then you can set it to uh, I believe it's drop and allow. So let's take a look at that real quick. So ESX CLI network firewall get. So by default my action is dropped so I'm on really high security which is awesome and it's also enabled and it's loaded. So I can do set dash dash default action and uh, let's see oh it's pass and drop so remember that so if I want to set that to pass oh what is it it's oh set true that's it and false to drop this is the worst because it's like set to true to set the default action to pass why don't you just set it to pass so true there we go standardization I tell you so now the default action is passed, so I'm low security. So let me change that back. False. Back to high security. Simple stuff. And then you can do dash dash enabled or dash E. And again, you set that to true to enable or false. And we're now disabled. So that's fairly simple. It's the default action that always gets me. And we're back. Default services. So there's a bunch of services in ESXi already set up. A service is a protocol configuration. Basically it says inbound ports and outbound ports allow or deny. So it's a firewall. It's, that's just kind of what it does, right? But those are built in. And the built-in ones can be enabled or disabled in the VI client or via the CLI using ESX CLI network firewall rule set, set dash rule set, and the name SSH server enabled true. So let's see if we can muddle our way through that command. Let's see, ESX CLI network firewall rule set. If you want to list the rule sets, there's your list and it tells you if they're enabled or not. And then we want to do, let's see, set. And then we can do dash dash rule set dash ID equals the ID. So we'll do FDM, and you can then, let's see, says this is right there, or and then you can set to enable it, so dash dash enabled equals, let's see, it's true right now, so let me set that to false, rule set list, and FDM is now closed, so let me turn that back on, but that's how you enable or disable it via the CLI, and get rid of my error here. Hey, that's funny. My host went down. It's not responding. <laughs> it may not have liked it when I was playing around with the rules earlier. Uh, let's see. Configuration. And firewall rules. Let me move this to the right. Firewall properties. And then you could just come in here and check 
or uncheck each thing that you want to allow or deny. But this gives you kind of an idea of what a rule looks like. So for the DNS client, incoming port is 53, outgoing is 53. Your incoming and outgoing ports may be different. You may do TCP only, UDP only, or both. It just depends on the built-in rule set.